If you want information on how to add someone to your Google Ads account, or maybe remove them, you've come to the right place. This video is going to cover the five different types of access levels a user may have when you add them to your account. We'll show you how to remove users and revoke access for manager accounts. We'll also show you the subtle difference on how users may have different abilities when added as a user individually, or if one of your managers adds a user to their account. And then we'll close out the video of looking at the security section within access and security. This adds another layer of protection to make sure only the right people have access to your account. No matter where you are in the Google Ads interface, there's only one way to get to the access and security section. That is by going up to the top navigation where it says tools and settings. If you click on it to open the menu, you can look within the setup column and it's going to be in a different location depending on if you're an individual user or in a manager account then you can click on Access and Security. If we look at the secondary navigation, we're highlighted under Individual Users. So within the first column all the way to the left, you will see the email address of the individual user who already has access to your account. So that's why this section is blurred out. The other column where you see something else is blurred out is Invited By. It's gonna show you which other admin user invited this person to the account. Top row was the one who created the Google Ads account. So it's impossible for someone to invite the creator to the account. The other columns that we see is when the user last signed in. This can be helpful if you have older users on the account, maybe former managers, former employees. You might be able to check on if they've been snooping or not. You'll get an idea of the access levels. And of course, we're gonna cover the five access levels within a Google Ads account. The authentication method, we're gonna close out once we talk about security, we'll talk about how to set up two-step verification within this section. We already talked about invited by, so added on the date the user was added to the account, pretty straightforward. And then for users who are already added to the account, the action you can take is to remove access. So if you do want to remove a user from your account, just click on remove access, and then you would need to click on remove access again to verify it. I'm not going to do that because I still want this email address attached to the account, so I'm going to cancel. If you're looking to add a new user to the account, just go up to the blue plus button. We're going to click on it and then enter in the email address. Here we see the five access levels available within Google Ads for individual users. This is adding someone directly to your Google Ads account. We're gonna get to managers or MCC accounts later. So first, the lowest level access in an account is email only. Email only access users can only get notifications or subscribe to emails and reports. So we see the certain notifications are disapproved ads and policy alerts, campaign maintenance alerts, recommendations for improving campaign performance, or industry-specific newsletters. They cannot make any changes to the account in any way. The second option is going to be for billing. Billing users, maybe it's just someone in the finance department who needs to look at certain transactions, but they have nothing to do with your marketing. This is probably the perfect access for them. They can view billing information. They can view past payment history. They can edit the billing information. Let's say they control the company credit card. And one thing that's not really checked off because they don't have a specific row for it is that billing users can edit and run their own billing reports. Not all the reports within the account, just what to do with billing. I do want to come back to this screen, but I also want to head back to the user section that we had in before. So I'm just going to click cancel for now. And I want to highlight this specific section here because it says to manage users who manage billing, visit the payments contact section of billing and payment settings. So you could click on the link here, but if you're in a different view, you can still go up to your tools and settings and under billing, you will find settings. And if you keep scrolling down, you can manage your payments users. And that's just another way to manage who has billing access to the account. And now we can talk about read only access. This is a popular access level that we typically get when we get a potential lead who wants us to at least get in the account, look around so we can come back to them with a proposal. This is also a popular access level to maybe give to your higher up manager or someone else within your company, potentially someone from your sales team who is somewhat connected to your marketing efforts, but you don't want them messing around and changing anything within your account. It's called read only access. Maybe look at it as view only access. They can still view billing information, but they can't change anything. They can view campaigns, but they can't change anything. They can still receive notifications and subscribe to the emails. Users with read-only access can still also use planning tools like Reach Planner, Keyword Planner, Performance Planner. They can see who else has access to the account, but they can't update or change users. And the only user they can invite is an email-only access user. For the next level up, it's gonna be standard access. 
This is the first level where a user can start making some significant changes to the account. Someone with standard access can start making changes to your campaigns. So that's of course everything in terms of your campaign settings, your ads, your targeting, your keywords, the big changes that will definitely impact your account. Another big change is now a standard user can start editing billing information, but a standard user cannot add other users or managers beyond email only access. To do that, you would need to head over to an admin user. Pretty much has full reign within the account. If you want to invite other users or other manager accounts, MCC accounts, you will need admin access. You will also need to have admin level access to add or remove any product links. That is linking your Google Ads account to other properties such as Google Analytics, Salesforce, HubSpot, CallRail, those sort of things. And that's found up in your tools and settings. And there you see linked accounts. Maybe we'll do another video on that one later. We're about to talk about manager accounts or MCC accounts. An admin level user is the only level that can accept and reject manager account requests. And it is the only access level that can unlink a current manager account. I do wanna cover managers next, but first I'm gonna show you what happens when we send the invitation. Here, a pending invitation was sent out showing what access level the invited user will get, the date that it was invited, not the date that they're gonna be added on, it's gonna be when that user accepts it for when it's added on. And then if you realize before the user accepts it that you sent it to the wrong email address or you sent it to the wrong person for whatever reason, you can always click on revoke. It's gonna ask you again if you wanna confirm it and then you can remove the user. When the invitation email goes out to the user that you invited to your Google Ads account, there will be a button for the user to accept the invitation. If that email address is not tied to a Google account or a Google Ads account, they will have to create one really quick, but that email will have instructions on how the user can do that, and it'll be fairly simple. We're going to talk about approved domains at the very end of this video, but if the invited user requests to use one of their alias emails, and that alias emails is already tied to that user's Google account, that'll still be accepted. It's not going to be common, so I wouldn't worry about it too much, and you'll learn a little bit more when we do talk about the allowed domains. But now let's head on over to managers. I have to blur out the manager names and accounts here, but this is to invite an MCC account to manage your Google Ads account. So a manager account is a different type of account that you're going to have to create with a different email address where it's one login. It's typically used by agencies where there's one login to access all of your clients' accounts. So how you would grant access would be in the upper right, we have it blurred out for now, you would need to take your 10 digit account ID, give it to the manager of your account. That person would request access. You would see it in this section right here to approve access. Once it's approved, it's gonna show you the date the manager account was linked, but this section is also the same area where you can go and remove access to a manager account, similar to removing a user. If I wanna click remove access, here's how you unlink a certain MCC. You would unlink it, just canceling it for now, but then that manager would be unlinked from your MCC and they can no longer make any changes. We strongly recommend going in, if you have former agencies that have managed your Google Ads account, go in and remove them if they're not doing any active work on the account. There's no reason for them to still have access because you cannot control who the manager account gives access to. Whoever owns the manager account can invite individual users with the same five access levels and you're not going to know who all has access unless they're making changes within the account still and you're looking at that within the change history. So to kind of show you what I mean, I'm going to hop into another Google Ads account that is an MCC so you can see some of the subtle differences. Within an MCC account, it's going to look pretty much the same and the users that are still blurred out are the users who have access just to this MCC and any client account that is linked to this MCC. So removing users is going to be the same. You're removing them from the MCC and to add a user to the MCC, we see it's pretty much the same process. I did say I was gonna share a link about user access levels for manager accounts because there are little differences on what a user can do to the manager account versus what they could do to linked client accounts via the manager account. So to get the full information on the differences, you can check out this link right here. It's gonna go directly to the Google Ad support page about manager user access levels. But they will get the same invitation that they will need to go and accept via their email. I still wanted to hop in here just so I can show you a different section that you may have noticed within the secondary top navigation, and that is related managers. So I had to blur out two full columns because it's pretty much all different companies' names and their manager account IDs. So with a manager account, if 
you go to this section, you will be able to see which other manager accounts are attached to your client accounts. So the manager account would be the other MCC, and then your related manager account would be your client account that you're managing. So maybe there's an old agency right below from where my mouse is moving is attached to this particular client. I can then either bring it up to the attention to my client and let them know, hey, these manager accounts are still linked to your account. Do you want us to remove it or unlink it from the account? There are accounts out there that do have HubSpot customer MCCs and other forms of company hierarchy MCCs. We've worked with some big companies before that create a different client account for different divisions, different languages, so there's a big corporate MCC. So if you're not sure what MCC is, just bring it up to your client contact. But it's a lot easier to see this in this view than going account by account. You probably notice that there is not a column to unlink via the related managers tab. This is just good to see which other MCCs are linked to your client accounts. So to unlink an MCC, you will still have to go into each individual client account. Go to the managers tab within each client account and unlink whichever MCC you want to remove. So then to close out this video and talk about security, I'm just going to hop back in to the first individual Google Ads account we were on. So then I'm going to close out with security. And as I said in the intro, this is a good section to add additional layers of protection to your account to make sure that the right people only have access. Now this account security is up to date. There are five best practices that Google Ads recommends. So if you haven't gone to this section yet, you may see a few additional recommendations that aren't showing up. But if you click on the view your security best practices link, we will see what those five recommendations are. They're gonna want every email or every user added to be enrolled in a two-step verification. They would also like that the account has two or more active admins. This is for a few reasons. We hear very frequently from clients or other people in the Twitterverse that they have clients who just flat out forget their passwords. Either they haven't been into Google Ads for a long time and they just don't remember how to get in. Having additional admins on the account that you trust can be very important so you don't get locked out. It can also protect you if there's any bad blood between admins. Luckily, I haven't run into this issue, but if someone tries to do some sabotaging, having additional admins can help gain control back of the account. And the last two are talking about domains being restricted. That means not letting any email domain within the account. You're controlling that. And we can do that back within the security section. So before we get to the domains thing, I just want to cover, here's where you set up two-step verification. We're telling Google all users need to turn on two-step verification to be able to enter our Google Ads account. We strongly recommend doing this. Yes, you can turn that off. We do not recommend doing that at all. Leave it on. I understand extra steps are annoying, but I'd rather have the security and knowing that my account is going to be safe. I especially want to do this from the MCC level. If you have a bunch of employees coming in and you're managing several client accounts, not only are you trying to protect your account, but you're also doing this protect your client accounts. You don't want to be responsible for any sort of mishaps that may occur from unwanted access. I'm going to cancel this because I already have two-step verification turned on. And now we can get to allowed domains. So if I expand this, what this setting is telling Google is the email address of users that we invite to the account must have the domains of gmail.com or paidmediapros.com. If a user doesn't have those, here are the scenarios. The first is they won't be allowed to be invited. If you're not going to budge on the allowed domains and say, nope, you must have gmail or paidmediapros.com, that person's not invited. So either they would have to create a different Gmail account, or in our case, we would have to create a Paid Media Pros login for them. And then the other option would just be to add another domain. That's just an example, agency.com, whatever the agency's domain is. Maybe they have a PPC at brandname.com. You can add the new brand name in there, approve it, save it, so then you'll be able to invite any user who has an email address ending in agency.com. For whatever reason, if the relationship with agency.com ends, not only would I want to remove the users or the manager account, I would also want to go back into security and remove the domain. So no future users from agency.com would be allowed to get access to the account. I'm going to X out of this and cancel. So if we head back up to users, try to add another one. Let's just give it read-only access. Nope, that was not my email address from grade school, but we see AOL.com was not one of the two allowed domains I had within my security settings. If I try to send the invitation, I will not be allowed to do that, even as a full admin on this account. That's when I'd have to go through those scenarios we already talked about and see if the user needs to use a different email address or potentially add an approved domain. And that is a pretty good understanding of what the access and security section can do within Google Ads make sure you understand what each access level can do or cannot do within the account before you send out a user invitation. 
If you stop working with anyone, or if there's someone who doesn't work for you anymore, they're no longer an employee, remove all users and all manager accounts from your Google Ads account to make sure any person who should no longer have access to your account cannot log in. I have heard horror stories of unwanted users gaining access to Google Ads accounts and the true owners or admins have such a hard time working with Google support to either get the account back or potentially not get it back at all. Always keep an eye on this, whether you're adding someone to the account or you're transitioning someone out of an account. If you have any questions on the access levels or what a user can and cannot do within the Google Ads account, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.